Don't do anything you're gonna regret. Don't do it! <sighs> what do you think you're doing? Margaret's sweater. She left it here for me to find. I have to give it back to her. Hello everybody, I'm Coco Cosmos and in this video I talk about why Mordecai sucks as a boyfriend. AKA, what is this dude's problem? Let's start with Margaret. Margaret is supposed to be representative of a first love. You think about her all the time, even dream about her. Bro takes that and brings it 100 fold. He killed his friend over her and that was when she was not paying him any mind. He had zero limits. The lengths he would go are non-existent. You're gonna drive 20 hours to give Margaret a sweater? She probably doesn't even know it's missing. Look, it's her sweater. She should have it back. And I think that's what separates them. She can have her own dreams and aspirations. Her life doesn't have to revolve around Mordecai. You still taking those classes? Yeah, yeah. Once their relationship got to the point of Mordecai trying to make it official, she tearfully declined because she got accepted into her dream school. And I get it. Long distance relationships aren't for everybody. I'm not gonna fault her for that. And if we actually pay attention, it's kind of true to her character. She went through relationships like water, or at least it seemed like it. And in world time, it was probably bigger gaps. When they were actually together, they were nice. Things were okay. But when they weren't, there seemed to be some sort of drama. They literally get thrown into friendship purgatory because they just won't make the move. Even this guy is tired. At least she made a move before then. After Mordecai and CJ break up, she tries to be friends with them, but once they see the, what the future could hold, they panicked about it. Ooh, financial stability, so scary, ooh. Nice company house, oh no. It could have just felt like it was a bit too much too fast when they just got back on friendly terms, but still. I'm not the biggest fan of them as a couple, and it kind of seems like they threw away a friendship for nothing. She doesn't know how to respect boundaries, and they're both kind of wishy-washy. We know that for fact, because we're going to take a look at Mordecai and CJ's relationship. Oh, my happiness and my despair. They could have been a beautiful friends-to-lovers married couple. And I'm going to say it, CJ's anger is always justified. Her frustration is justified. She gets disrespected time and time again because Mordecai doesn't know what he wants. Whenever she goes storm mode, it's because he f***ed up in some way dealing with Margaret. Exhibit A, he asks Margaret on a date when he already has plans with CJ. Now, I'll give bro the tiniest little itty bitty bit of leeway because she thought he had feelings that weren't there. Exhibit B, the Christmas party. How on earth do you accidentally kiss someone like that? Exhibit C, the 1000s chopper flight party. Margaret knows damn well why they can't be friends. Exhibit D, the double date. CJ even apologized for the way she's been acting before suggesting the double date. It just all gets worse and worse. He stood up for himself, said whatever was between them happened and it's over now, and CJ is super important to him. But one quick memory montage and it's on God. This has learned nothing. He dogs CJ so bad every time he's in the same room as Margaret. Even in spirit, apparently. But Mordecai does his big one and they finally get back on good terms. Healthy relationship territory. And he straight up botched it. What are you hijacking someone's wedding for? You can tell either of these girls your feelings one on one. But now you want to get on stage and do this big speech in front of all these people at an event that has nothing to do with you, my guy. Like, come on. It's like he didn't even like CJ for real. This is not how you treat someone you care for. Close to the end of it, it kind of sounds like he was leaning towards CJ, but we'll never know because the whole thing just sounded like he wanted to be single. Like, how do you mess up that bad? You finally get someone decent and this is what you do. It just seemed like at the end of the day, Margaret was more important. I love CJ as a separate character, not just as Mordecai's next love interest. And this honestly teaches a valuable lesson. 
being the cool girlfriend won't stop you from being cheated on. If you have your boundaries, inform and enforce them. If you're uncomfortable with your partner hanging out with an ex, let them know. And if it's a deal breaker, let it be just that. Nothing good has ever come from being steamrolled. Let's move on to the middleman. He's a very awkward, insecure little guy. When it comes to relationships, he tends to overthink just a tad. A smidgen. It gets so bad that his name becomes a noun. So you pulled a Mordecai, huh? <laughs> we can also see that with his and Rigby's dynamic. I'm the smart one, and you're my friend. That's our dynamic, dude. I have a high school diploma, and you don't. I'm Especially when he goes back to school to get his diploma. Is all this really necessary? I mean, graduating from high school is like the least a person can accomplish. But it's a big deal for Rigby. I can't believe I have to explain this to him. Another thing I've noticed, he's a bit self-destructive and people-pleasing when it comes to these girls and life in general. He wants them both happy somehow, some way, but here's the thing. It can't happen. He tries to make it happen and it just doesn't work. Mostly because he knows that he has or had feelings for both of them. But he doesn't want to make things weird. Things are very much weird though. Every time the three of them are near each other, there's obvious tension. Mordecai very much has an out of sight, out of mind mindset when it comes to dealing with them separately. The movie thing, the Christmas kiss, it's like he wants both, but knows he can't have both. Like, why was he so disappointed when Margaret said she had a boyfriend? I have a boyfriend! You have a boyfriend? Separately, he's okay, I guess. But then he does something to ruin it accidentally. Or he turns something slightly embarrassing. It's a huge deal. Like, when CJ met his mom, and his mom was being uber embarrassing, but CJ wasn't even bothered by it. He had to get his past selves to talk to him and for him to realize it's not that serious. Bro had less than stellar breath when he kissed Margaret for the first time and literally time traveled to make things worse and ultimately not even kiss her. Everybody was tired of watching his bullshit. He couldn't even admit that he was jealous that his friend could make Margaret laugh and ask her on a date. He's clearly bothered. Rigby gave him ample opportunity and he still didn't make the move. He spent more time and energy being a dick to Rigby than asking Margaret out. His thing with Margaret only started because she was tired too and wanted to make things shake. He had me head in the hands every time he was set up to make a move and he just didn't. Like, he was three yards from a touchdown, but he fumbled. Like, stop it. I get it. Confessing feelings can be nerve-wracking, but you gotta either say something or don't. Bro even went through thinking she was getting engaged and going through a depression all to find out it was just her cousin showing her his new leg. All he had to do was talk to her. And at that point, she didn't even know Mordecai was into her. So if she would have gotten engaged, that would have been his own fault for missing out. He danced around it too long. TLDR, his simping makes him a terrible boyfriend. Now we don't know much about her as she only makes a small appearance in the finale and in the 25 years later comic with their kids, but he seems to have grown a lot after he started art school again. He would have had to considering what was already mentioned. I like to think he's taken those hard truths to heart and navigated carefully. Or maybe she liked how old he was. Some people think it's cute, me being one of them. Part of me does wish we saw their journey, but at the same time, I saw his love life crash and burn several times, and I think that's for the best that we didn't see it. I can handle a love at first sight thing. If I had my way, Mordecai and CJ would have been endgame. I adored the good parts of their relationship. I cherish them even. The banter is great, they look good together, and the chemistry is surreal. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, which one? All of them. Let's just start at the beginning and see how far we get. Okay. If we're being real though, I think that relationship reached its semi-natural end. Considering how it started, they could only end with a bang. And there's many reasons why it couldn't have worked specifically because of the insecurity issues. Even though they were so compatible, they could be their own worst enemies. The one thing I can't get over is this part. 
How did they not recognize each other because those masks did not do much? Do you agree? Think I'm being too hard on him? Let me know in the comments below. Coco Cosmos out. Oh.